Hello everyone, it is the final word show. Liverpool beat Bournemouth by two goals to one in the Premier League. Um, yeah, hi Steve, welcome. Hi Paul, thanks for having me. Good <laughs> Stephen is here as well. Hi Georgia. Hello. Jack Gill as well. <laughs> yes, amazing. Sounds like family fortunes. Yeah, that's <laughs> <okay. laughs> um, We are brought to you in association with The Athletic today. Uh, we've got a fantastic 50% off offer and there's a seven day free trial thrown in there as well some of the best writing on the face of planet earth right now being done by the likes of our very own super james pierce uh, not being bad news pierce he just gets to write really good things instead instead of breaking people's hearts and dreams uh but talking about transfers all the time he's been he's been let loose uh si Hughes is on there and the best thing about it right now is you get to keep up to date with all the things happening around the premier league as well so you know they were the first to break some of the biggest news stories that have happened in the world of football obviously around manchester city etc etc so you can get on there brilliant right now as i say you can get 50 percent off uh the code uh, and the link will be in the description underneath both the video and the podcast version of this. So get involved. Um, stay a brilliant game, exciting, dramatic, edgy seat stuff, and put Liverpool back in the driving seat. The Manchester derby was great, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I, was, uh, I, was, I, I, was, I knew there was a punchline. I just I, I, I hadn't figured that out in my head. Um, yeah, that, that helped. Um, I actually thought the Bournemouth game. I thought it was all right at first. It just, it, I mean, the ground was rocking. The you know, the, the, it was a fast-paced game. I think it just be, it became in the second half a bit of kind of what where Liverpool have been for a while and that not at their best. You know, in terms of attacking, because you know, even in games gone years gone by or months gone by rather, we even if we had that one in, we probably would have scored four. We'd have blew them away second half, but we never quite got that. You know, whether it's a lack of confidence or just something missing. Um, Bobby for me, you know, just can't buy a goal at Anfield. All that, all that kind of stuff. It made it more nervy than it probably needed to be yeah. on, on the balance of play. But, I mean, I say I went with my lads for the first time. I absolutely loved it. Both of us was a, a great experience. The fact that we won obviously makes it a lot better as well. But, uh, yeah, I, all in all, I thought Liverpool were all right. They were, it, it was it was an improvement on recent weeks, but it probably isn't where they were post-break, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it was an odd one, wasn't it, George? It was, it was not a... It, me and Chris did a post-match stuff, and it was all a bit... Everyone's like, general attitude was a bit like... Huh. Yeah. Well, that's done, and that's why I referenced the the, the, the Manchester derby. We'll we'll do a bit on that a bit later on, actually, because I think it's actually in some regards more interesting than than mm-hmm. our game because of the impact it kind of has on the season and what have you. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't a brilliant game. There was just about enough in there that you know Liverpool deserve to win. Mm. But equally, there's a couple of dodgy moments in there. In fact, the first the first goals, and I thought, where do you sit on it? Because I think Klopp was adamant that it was a foul. I think we all in the ground felt it was a foul on Gomez. Most people watching it would say it was a foul on Gomez. Was it a foul on Gomez? Yeah, I think it was like I think it was pretty obvious because it wasn't you know a shoulder shoulder. It wasn't sort of a coming together. It was a pretty clear and obvious push on him. But then I still don't think that excuses Gomez as defending. Yeah. I think he reacts and he spends far too long reacting to, yeah. to a push and looking for that foul. Um, and maybe it's because we've got VAR. I think everyone and, stops. Yeah, I think it's because we've got VAR now and things like that. People think that everything's going to stop for a minute yeah. and then it's going to... So he was a little too reliant on that and I think he gave him just far too much space. And I think him dropping back then... It, it knocks everyone else out of line. It, it allows them to push forward. It allows them to, you know, eventually be on side. I think his reaction kind of just creates a bit of a domino effect for. I think for that, the goal. that it was it was it was a bizarre passage of play, Jack. Because obviously we're kind of getting hit on the counter. Milner's up the other end of the pitch, and they're, they're, everyone's struggling to kind of get back in. And I, I, my attitude was, oh, I'll be that that'll get this allowed. It just will. Mm. And I wonder whether that was the, the mentality of the players because, look, eventually they get back in line and the play just carries on. But it all just like, it felt like Bournemouth we were going, oh, go on, we'll just stick this in the back of the net yeah. and, let, and, and let them decide. And ultimately, they did, they did the right thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a blatant foul. I think, you if know... If Gomez it's... falls over, I think yeah. it takes a tumble. I think there's no doubt. We'd be sure. I don't mm, my, my mate said to me, he said, if that was Van Dyke that had been pushed in the back, yeah. then, then we would have got the foul. Yeah. 100%. And I, I think for me, the biggest selling point in how you know it's a foul is when that, that referee on BT Sport, whose job is to solely lick the arses of Premier League referees, <laughs> he, he even said that it, it should have been a foul. So yeah. I, I, I think for me, I, I'm not sure how the referees missed it. I'm not sure why they are decided not to overrule it. But I think, again, it's... It's testament that you know we've been down the last 
couple of weeks after the recent results and, and yet again we bounced back after going 1-0 one, one down. I, I thought Bournemouth were very were more niggly than Bournemouth ever have been. Yeah. Mm. Bournemouth usually very, very nice. Um, mm. But they weren't. They were... Callum Wilson especially was on yeah. throwing his body away. You know, he had the ball and he'd throw it away. Just you know, he went to give it to Firmino and then rolled it past him. You know, just like yeah. little niggly bits of gamesmanship. And I, I, from where I was at, I, it, they were running towards me. I was in terms of yourself in the cop. It, it just looked like he'd been fouled. And yeah. I, I, I put on Twitter like, was that a foul? Because it looks like a, it looks like a foul. But then that, that's the thing is that when you don't get it, because you know that there's in, in all in you know. Again, time's gone by years, like last year or whatever. You you would just carry on. G old days. You, you, yeah, you yeah, probably yeah. would. You just got. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd have to carry on. But I agree. There, there was hesitancy because I think it was that clear that they thought, well, even if that guy's missed it, because you know he's he, from where he is and stuff, the video ref is gonna he's gonna just overrule that because you could see the guy's arm come out. It's, yeah. it's not the first time though, is it? Because it happened against United as well. Um, at Old Trafford, exactly the same circumstance when United got the goal there as mm. well. Um, I, I, I just think it's one of them where it just seems to not not want to give it. Well, that's that's the weird situation you're left in. Uh, I can't, I can't. I haven't got the energy to go back into the AI. Oh, not be honest. But, yeah. but the, the the referee. It makes you wonder whether the referee has seen it and thought, I'll just let this go and let the VAR sort it out. Yeah. Mm. But it, it's one, another one of those situations when you're right. We've seen them countless times this season when when he lets it go, then in the VAR go. Well, the referees let it go. Is it clear enough for us to to pull it back? And because it's not like it's not massive, is it? It should be recoverable because mm. it's still the it's the ball still gets moved on like three times after that after that incident. Liverpool should still be able to switch on and what have you. But um, I thought it was I did I did think it was a bit dodgy. I'm glad it didn't matter. Yeah, but he was also if you go back to the, you know again not just that incident but the incident there was a lot of times where they were in. Right down the middle of our pitch, yeah. just like it was so open. That, you know, obviously we'll, we'll speak more on the later the clearance. That's just another just a ball straight down the middle. And Watford did it well, and 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 De- Dexy Lovren got slaughtered. And right, so he didn't play well. But it's happened in the games since that. You know, mm. it wasn't it wasn't brilliant yet there. It, it was, you know, it was pretty average. And Gomez again, talk about Lovren getting bullied by Dini. Wilson was having having his way with again. And I know he fired him in that one, but there was instance where he just looked a bit too much for him at times. And, and Callum Wilson isn't like amazing. I mean, he's a, he's a Half decent Premier League player. I think he was really good. Actually, he played. Yeah. Well, he did play well. He had a good game. But I'm just saying, like he's. It's not like we're getting torn apart by Sergio Aguero. You know, like, like a world class player. We got these like two run of the mill Premier League decent strikers who have kind of bullied Liverpool a little bit. Yeah. And we've we we were never in that instance for a while. It's it's, it's kind of creeped back in recently. Um, again, I think a lot of it's to do with watching front of the centre half as well. I imagine we'll talk about that. But it just looked like it, it again. Go back to the beginning of the season, it was too easy to get in against Liverpool, and it didn't matter as much then because we were scoring threes and twos and threes and fours mm-hmm. and whatever. It just seems that now it's a bit, it's a bit of a harder slog to get those goals, which makes it more apparent. You know, Bournemouth could easily have scored three, mm-hmm. like genuinely. You know, Ache should score his header. The Fraser one is, is what it is. They had real, they had chances to, to score against Liverpool, and that's, that's a concern, isn't it, going forward? I think bit? one of the big concerns, Georgian, in a really roundabout way. Is Firmino because mm. um, it's not. A, I don't think Liverpool will be concerned by Firmino because all of his underlying stats still read very, very well. He's mm-hmm. still doing all the right things, you know, in terms of his XG. He's still bang up there. He should be scoring goals, but he's not scoring goals. Mm. And and the, there comes a point where that is a, that is going to be a problem. And that kind of kind of links into what Steve's saying there. When you're not putting things away, mm. that's a well, that is a, that is a concern ultimately. Yeah, and I think as well, I think it, it's highlighted by the fact, that, that, like she said, that we're not banging goals everywhere else. I think, you know, I I always remember the Firmino and my like idea is when he played against Newcastle and he's setting, you know, Mo Salah up with all these flicks and he he's kind of just looks like he's playing on a park with like a bunch of kids, and I I think that kind of edge is slightly gone and whether that's his own confidence and, and he's thinking about, you know, this goal at Anfield and things like that. Like it must creep in the fact that everybody's talking about it and, yeah. and you know, it's it's something that he must want so desperately to, to just do. Um but I think it's it's the fact that he's not looking as sort of 
he always looks like a bit sharp and kind of like mm. he does like the magic things that nobody else kind of does and he's not doing that as it's well. That final, it's that final, it's just the final thing isn't it, you know he misses an absolute sitter, he has that one where he, he flicks it over the defender right at the dead ball line and just smacks it across the face of goal which is neither here nor there and that's the thing Jack, is I wonder whether he's just entering into that world now where it's, it's playing on his mind and it can't not be playing on his mind, it's like a year since he's scored, I, <laughs> scored at Anfield. I, I, I said the other day, his first goal at Anfield this season is coming on Wednesday. It's, it's just going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to happen. It's one of them things with, with Bobby Ware as well. I'd get him in your football index because once he gets his one, <laughs> yeah. they're not going to stop. It yeah. wouldn't surprise me if he bags that trick on Wednesday. And See, just... I'm, not sure, I'm not that confident in him at the minute. That, I, I'm, I mean, history suggests he'd be fine, but right now, for, even for the next few weeks, he, he looks short. Mm. He looks short of half a yard even. And he's never blisteringly quick, but he just looks like... Uh, the, the Newcastle game is perfect when it's, ju it's just in and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything just it looks half a second slower, and he's already quite slow anyway. So it's it's it, it's you know it's, it's it's shown even more than that. I mean, and the goal, you know, the miss. It's not the, the miss can happen. This Mo Salah's missed absolute sitters this season. It, it doesn't really affect him. But when I saw in the ground his body language after he missed it, it was like, you know, it was like oh, I can't believe that again. They, that was it, and it, it it does. I agree. It looks like it's on his on his head a little bit. It's reminded me a little bit of the Genie Wijnaldum thing where he couldn't score, score away from home, mm. and then he scores in the Olympico in on the, on the run to the Champions League final, and all of a sudden it doesn't kind of matter because as long as he's doing this is one of the situations there. If you do as long as you're doing all the right stuff, it, you've got to trust that it'll come. He scored enough goals in his life. What I think's funny is that because there's always got to be a, a a player that's the, the the scapegoat or whatever. I don't think Liverpool fans are particularly scapegoating, but I'm seeing other fans talking about him. I've seen Arsenal fans who are desperate to like to slaughter them and they're trying to compare to say that you're comparing them to Dennis Bergkamp and all this kind of stuff. And it's not like Bergkamp scored tons of goals. It's, mm. It provided everyone else a score. And we're talking about it uh, once again, another 20 goal season for uh, Mohamed Salah, who had, let, let, let's move on to, Steve. He, um, 70 goals in 100 games now for Liverpool yeah. is, I mean, there's no getting away from it. That's elite. That's as elite as it comes. Yeah, it's absurd. It's, it's just ridiculous numbers from a, a ridiculous player. And, you know, Sadio Mane didn't know favours with that one. <laughs> one of the worst cutbacks. <laughs> Honestly, it was absolutely it. awful. And to, it, it, was, it was like, what are you doing? And then somehow he, he sneaks in that bottom corner. And yeah, it, it, Salah still frustrates a lot of people, I think, in terms of outputs and stuff. And it's like, I get it because he could actually get more because he yeah. does miss a few. You know, he, he is a bit greedy at times. But you know what, the, the numbers, like, it's, it's absurd numbers. And like you say, it's, it's worth carrying someone. If you have to accept the fact that he's going to be a little bit greedy now and then. Yeah. And whatever, sad. He's got 70 goals in 100 games. Like, and I think it's only Alan Shearer who's got more. Fact, yeah. yeah just he's got 79, let's, I think. Just to contextualise it, yeah, in terms of a first 100 games for a club in the Premier League, the only player, player who's got more is Shearer, who's got 79, which is just unreal. Torres is on there as well, isn't Tor it? Well, yeah, Liverpool, in terms of Liverpool, um, Torres, 63, mm. and Suarez and Fowler, 62. And they're number nines. Yeah. All three of them are number Absolute nines. Absolute centre forward, number nines. Fowler took penalties, Suarez took free kicks and, and, and pens as well, I think. More free kicks. Obviously, yeah, obviously, Gerard was there, wasn't he? Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, again, this is what keeps getting brought back to. He's play, he plays wide. I know he has played centre forward in his time, but it's mad, isn't it? Because I, I don't know whether I'm right in saying this, because he's adored all over the all over the place or whatever. But it, it, and and maybe it's a generational thing because I don't have the same affinity with footballers that I did when I was in my teens and twenties because you just don't when you when you're significantly older than most of them it's hard to have that level jealous of jealous of the money <laughs> no yeah yeah that too like um, but uh, it doesn't feel like Salah has the levels of love of any of those players that we that I've kind of no. at the minute if, if you have to, if you have, if you do an odds on whose song gets sung first the Liverpool game I mean the odds on it's Bobby Firmino. Yeah. The first yeah. song that he sing or to play is Bobby Firmino's yeah. song. And then it takes a while sometimes for Salah to get his song. You know what I mean? It yeah. is, it's, I think what it is, mate, is that he doesn't do the extravagance a lot. Yeah. Like no. he doesn't do the mad flicks that Firmino yeah. does. And he, he doesn't run past seven like Mane does. And he's not, you know, he's not Virgil van Dijk where he, he's just bullying people up. He's kind of just like, he's a bit like a machine footballer. Yeah. He's just so efficient and like so dangerous. But like, it's ridiculous. He's got 70 goals in 100 games. It's, it's bizarre. He's the main reason why Liverpool, or one of the main reasons why Liverpool have gone 97 points and they're on course to do it again and go, go even more potentially. 
I thought think... I actually thought and I actually thought it was one of his better games. I actually thought all really around, good. I thought he played well. Yeah. I, I think it's one of them as well where the first season doesn't help because he was so so good that first season. He was bang on. The amount of goals and assists he got that year was was unbelievable. And I think now people people say they don't. But it's so hard not to compare him now to that yeah. first season. Well, because where everyone was going, it's me- it was messy levels. You know, yeah, yeah. forty-three goals, fourteen assists, and fifty appearances in seventeen, eighteen is <sighs> superhuman. I mean, and then, but then by comparison, you're right. Bear in mind, prior to him coming along, and obviously a little bit of money involved in this as well. Like Coutinho was finishing our top goal scorer on like eleven, twelve goals a mm. season, and he, we, now we've got a lad who plays on the wing. Who scores more goals than you know than than some of the greatest centre forwards ever to grace the game? Mm. You know, more goals in that spell like than in hundred games than like Ruud van Nistel, like, I think as well, unreal. it's the same with Firmino now. I think you've got to take into account what's behind them as well, or who they're playing alongside. So I think like you talk about Firmino, like Firmino's like dip in form. You got to look at like the midfield constantly changing behind them. And also, like like we said, that that's kind of been our problem area for a bit, especially with Hendo being out and, and Milner just coming back in. And the same goes for Salah. You look at kind of that side as well. You've got uh, Trent, who never really changes, but with Gomez being out for, for, for a long period of time, that side was always the side that was shifting and changing. Yeah. So I think the fact that he's even... We talk about him hitting the same foot, and the fact is, he's consistent at the end of the day. If you're talking about a winger getting twenty goals every season, like I think his, I think his goal at the weekend sums him up. Just that finish, I, th- I think it is such a hard finish, but yeah. he makes it look so easy, yeah. and that's what Salah does time and time again. He makes, he makes finishes like that look absolutely easy, and he definitely deserves a lot more. People think I don't think many people think he's our best player. No, I don't no. think to do. But what what, what he, he he's brilliant at, and he doesn't is what the others can't do, and even for me, no one can't do this. He holds the ball up, mm. and I know that's it's it's really old school Sunday league times, but at times Liverpool just need to get out. Yeah. And it's give it to Salah, and he'll just stand there all He's the... ridiculous strength on the yeah. ball. And he done it again. He was bullying Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah, like the does. amount of times either with him holding it up or he was in a 50 50 and he's chasing down. Because I, I wonder whether he's, whether he's lost. Maybe not half, even half a yard of pace, but he's, he's lost a step, I think. You know, maybe it's just overall fitness and fatigue and, and, and cumulative injuries or whatever. But he's gained that in strength. Mm. So, it, whereas two seasons ago, he was making it every single time. If on the odd instance where he doesn't make it now, he'll go shoulder to shoulder with you, and he'll come out with the ball. Mm. And he was against Bournemouth. He was he was he was maintaining possession in a, in a number of ways. And again, you're right, Steve. It's not sexy. It's not the kind of thing that you put on match the day highlight reels. But it was essential to Liverpool coming out with the victory. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was really really good. Actually, I thought he. You know, I know, I know Milner got man the match and he played well. I thought Salah might have got it. I thought he. I thought he was really really good and. He looked like, I don't know, a little bit like getting the, getting the bit between your teeth. It looked like he realised, like, you know, something needs to, something needs to happen. Like, that pass is shite by man. It's awful. Yeah. It's horrendous. And he, and he turns it with one touch and one finish, and all of a sudden you can kind of forget about it. Because yeah. if that, you know, if that touch is, if, if that pass is that bad and, and, man, and, and Salah can't make something magic out of it, it's another, oh, well, there was a big chance Liverpool missed. And yeah. you sometimes get those in those games when yeah. you, when you, you know, mm-hmm. you one down and you're, you, you you look like you're not everything's working and you blow an absolute shocker, which it would have been. It can it can deflate everyone. Well, it was very typical of like the sort of form that the front three's been in. I think for the last few weeks, George, that Mane winning the ball back, doing brilliantly, mm. and then it's that final ball, and that's that's the thing I think it's been lacking between the front three is their mm. interplay. I think has probably been as bad as it's been for a yeah. while. That that it doesn't feel cohesive. It doesn't feel effortless. Yeah, um, and we're just so lucky. That both of them, uh, ultimately in front of goal, are so good. I think that's the thing. Individually, the front three are all brilliant, and I think Salah and Mane definitely. If you were to everyone else in the team's playing crap, them two will still. If they have a good game, they're willing to you know drag a game by the scruff of the neck yeah. and, and win it. Um, I think sometimes that's what Firmino lacks is if if the team's necessarily not playing well, but he's having a good game, I still don't see him sometimes being the one to... He's, yeah, to, him, him taking the game by the scruff of the neck for him is doing being more of him. It's being a bit deeper. Yeah. It's, it's probably trying to influence he the He needs someone else to be on it as well because I, I always think of him as a creator rather than, than a finisher and yeah. he, he usually gets the, the kind of tap-ins, if you like, or the worldy goal. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was just going to say, saying that... He, 
I, I used to think that as well, but then obviously this season he's had his moments as well. Like you look at the Club World Cup, yeah. there were times then where yeah. you wondered when's it going to come and Firmino was the man to step up and mm-hmm. I, I just think it's a bad patch. I think yeah. the, you think obviously, I know it's the same for Salah and Mane, but um, they obviously played a lot of football. He went to final, they won the Copper America in the summer. He's played all this season. You think last season he got rotated out a lot more for, for Origi. Mm. Um, and I think obviously he's had that break. He's given him time off. He's probably been on the lagers again. Mm. And, and now he's he's back at it. And, and I, th- I think it's just that. I think I, it wouldn't surprise me if he plays Wednesday, but then he's rested in the derby. It, w- it wouldn't mm. surprise me. As I say, I mean, in terms of Firmino, I don't think there's ultimately anything wrong with his all, there's nothing mm. wrong with his all-round play he just needs to stick the ball in the back of the net a bit more mm. and that's the thing about him it, it's not and I just don't think goal scoring is as natural to him as it is to someone like Mo Salad or Sadio Mane um, they're, the, they're the more clinical I guys I was thinking like his confidence on the ball isn't lacking it's just in front of goal like yeah. there were times in that game where he was coming deep deep into our half we'd have a, a, a throw in right in our half and he'd be him he'd give it to us to get us out yeah. and that's that your centre forward that doesn't really happen you know, yeah. like, Sergio Aguero isn't dropping between the centre half to get, you know, so it, that's, the, that's the Bobby Firmino it's, it's the rough and the smooth I think on the ball he doesn't look like his, his, his confidence but around the box he does yeah. it all looks a little bit hesitant yeah and just yeah, last year on the Salah thing though I mean at the minute 20 goals and Eight assists for the for Salah. Uh, we're, 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 he will go down as one of the greatest players ever to play for Liverpool. Um, make no doubt about it. I think you know, but it, it's I, I find the whole thing funny, isn't it? The, the, and maybe it's just because we, we're spoiled for choice for favourites. Is that you? You've got no. I think in the days when we had Torres, okay, you, you might have really liked Jamie Carragher, or you and you might have liked Sammy Hippier or whatever. But you really, it was Gerard or Torres, wasn't it? Mm. They, they they were your choices. Um, you know, you had Fowler back in the day, maybe McManaman and or whatever, or you had Owen, and then you had Gerard and a couple of others. Whereas now, like people love Andy Robertson as much as they've loved any centre forward to play for mm. us, and wonder where the Salah just falls a little bit, maybe a little bit far. That maybe it's just that maybe it's the glo- maybe it is the global status thing that doesn't vibe with us. But for whatever reason, make no doubt about it, Mo Salah is world class. I and think as well, it was like when when people were kind of especially like here, kind of trying to get across how good Jordan Henderson was and nobody was buying it. And it's like, no, just because he doesn't do, you know, diagonals every two games, he is the most consistent and efficient player. Yeah. And now the fact that we don't have him and you people are finally say, Oh, you you see, you missed Jordan Henderson. It's the exact same with Mo Salah yeah. is he works, he's efficient, he does the easy things and the hard things without breaking a sweat. That ball and he you plays won't for see Milner it. for the for the when Milner's completely in. His yeah. left back, he's he's basically on the corner of the six yard box and he totally fluffs his lines. But that pass from Salah's Absolutely out of this world, and it's mad because I, you know, I, I criticised him for being a bit more. You know, he was always the end to a move. It had to all lead up to Mo Salah. But again, look, eight assists so far this season. He got ten the season before, fourteen the season before that. Like, and he's also putting down elite level centre forward mm. goals. Nobody says Harry Kane needs to set up more people. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and we love and everyone loves everyone unequivocally loves Sadio Mane. He doesn't put down those level of assist numbers either. I think as well with the Torres thing and kind of people not. I think during then as well, we never necessarily bar maybe Rafa. We never really had a manager that everybody agrees on and loved. And I don't think we kind of had like a starting eleven that everybody yeah. loved. It, it, like there would always be one or two or individuals, sometimes yeah. like five names that you'd be yeah. like why are they even yeah. why are they playing for us just before sorry just before I get slaughtered by everyone Mane has got eight assists this season before, it, before <laughs> inevitably the comments bring that bring that up but last season only got two assists so there you go that's the thing is that like, Salah is producing numbers that are, take away Messi and Ronaldo because they are just like Freaks, Not absolutely, <laughs> just freak numbers. Like it's up there with the best of anyone. He yeah. he, sc- he scores goals and he makes assists as, as as well as any Liverpool player in history. Really, doesn't well, he? people are talking. People are absolutely jizzing in their pants about Grealish and Madison and Cantwell, and these are lads who are like meant to be creators. And Salah's got. I, I mean, I haven't not seen them since this weekend. The updated stats. I don't know whether any of them added assists this this weekend, but. I think he's got at least, none of them's got more assists. I don't think the Mo Salah's got this season. And you can argue different teams and all that kind of stuff. Like, but again, their jobs are creators. They are designed. They are there to put the ball to the people who score who score the goals. And this is a lad who also does that as well. 
I think as well, when you look at the sides, it's obviously everyone's playing the same sides type thing, but teams set up different against yeah. Liverpool. I, I don't see a lot of teams putting 10 players behind the ball against Villa, against, you know, You don't Norwich. park the bus against Bournemouth, do you? Like, exactly. You know? So to be able to create and find gaps within that space, like imagine if he was, you know, in, think, in some of the other teams. I think another thing is that the players you just mentioned are English. So they're hyped up a lot more than yeah. obviously Mo Salah's going to be. Yeah, it's and true. And that, 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 true. That's Very true. fine. Let him let him not be hyped up. It's fine by me. He's flexed <laughs> yet another golden boot and adds another major on it to his, uh, to his trophy cabinet. Not Fair play him. Um, our second goal, Virgil van Dijk's brilliant. Man, eight billion finish. You know, we, we, we've kind of talked around it, but that goal, that that was a that was a centre forward finish. Yeah, it was. You know, that whole like Thierry on me would do that for fun. Torres would do that for fun. Just stride onto it, open your body, slot it, makes it look effortless. Um, apologies to Chris because I put the picture out of him. He's in the background of the Mane celebration um, and did like a fat. I spot the page. I want to pick out a page up. Did you go with George? Yeah, perfect. Um, and it's the one moment where he's not celebrating. Chris's face is like, Ooh, that was that was yeah. He, he was a very excited man for that. That goal was one of those goals where you know it's a goal. Five seconds before it's a goal. Yeah. Like the second one, I get on the end of that. He intercepts that ball. You know, well, we've just scored. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I was, I was standing with my son, and the second Van Dyke gets it. Everyone's going, oh, and, and yeah, pointing him towards yeah, the action. Yeah. It's, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna see Manny score because you just knew that he was always, and that that has always been the case with him. Yeah, there's been times in the past where he, he, I would never have wanted him there, but it was. Everyone was celebrating before, like. Uh, yeah. Wait, before I'm, I'm not gonna lie. When I saw the pass that he made to Salah, and I saw him squaring it, the very first time I watched it, I thought, "Why are you squaring a the ball there?" Then I kind of thought, you know, left foot. And when you looked at the space in front of Salah, if that ball would have been right, then you think he had no brainer for square. But there was that doubt in my mind from the start. Why? Why has he done that? I thought, is he off it? Is he not? And then he just slots it down. I thought, oh, who well, am I to worry? Like, yeah, you, yeah. you see you, Sally. He's absolutely sound. something else. Um, Jack Steve mentioned him briefly before, and you know, he's come up a couple of times, and he should do. I want to talk about James Milner. Oh. Um, I think, Matt, look, he takes the man of the match. He was my man of the match, I thought. And not necessarily because he was he was perfect, but he, he embodied a lot of the stuff that I think we've probably been lacking for the last few games. You know, when you've not got Henderson on the pitch, when you've not got him on the pitch, people can, I think people do this all the time. They, they see Van Dyke and they go, well, he should be Liverpool captain because he's boss. And it's like, Virgil van Dijk, I wouldn't want Virgil van Dijk as, as captain because he's just too laid back. And you need, <laughs> no, but you're too, but he's a, He's a lead by example kind of football because he's so good, and you you don't want to slack below standards because you want Virgil Van Dijk to be to, to like you because he's so good, but he's not the kind of guy who's gonna go and just put someone into the stands to change the course of a game. That's just not how he not how he plays. I mean, for God's sake, look at the Champions League game away at Man City and Sterling absolutely has him off when like if that was a if that was a. James Milner Henderson mentality did a pick Sterling up above the heads and throwing him ten rows back. <laughs> um, James Milner was, he was just wonderful. There's just something yeah. so so lovable about a fella who goes and puts that kind of effort in. Yeah, I I think he's for me he's the best Bosman transfer in the history of the Premier League. I th I think he, the thing is he's not like a Calvin Klein model sort of player, <laughs> but he's James Milner. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like he will do everything perfectly. He will give his all. BT Sport picked it before the game. Obviously him doing that talk. You've probably seen it. The talk to the players and whatever. And for me, I think obviously with professionals, that's probably expected. You expect that sort of thing. But I, I think it just shows with James Milner what he brings to this side. And obviously it's the same with Jordan Henderson you need players like that you need experienced players who, who will give them their all on the pitch and it's like I say he does absolutely everything perfectly and it will just give everything to, to, to the game and, and, and for Liverpool he um yeah, this is just one of those situations, isn't it, Judge, where it, it, I think it elevates everything. It, there's a reason why, I was thinking about this watching the Manchester derby, why every all the Manx love Wan Bissaka and it's why people immediately took to Fabinho because, like, Slad, he's a boss, aren't they? Mm. You know what I mean? You don't really need them, but a good, old-fashioned, putting your body on the ball, line. Win the ball, win the player. Win the, win the ball, take the man, all that kind of stuff. And Milner, Milner's got that for him. But, you know, he's he's come back in. He's not played a lot of footy this, since the turn of the year because of injury. 
He's just come back in. He's playing left back again, which we don't even bat an eyelid that anymore. Mm. James Milner was a, a winger who wants to play centre mid, <laughs> and we play him at left back, and he's boss. And then and he and he also you know he's he's putting thunder and tackles in, and look ultimately that clearance as well. Mm. Unreal. Well, I think as well for the for the brief sort of dip that we've had. Everybody was saying, you know, it's because we haven't got Henderson. Henderson's not there. And I, I sort of tried to make the point, but Milner wasn't there as well. And you need one or the other in yeah. them in them cases. And it's not because they do, you know, the Firmino stuff or they do these, these or even that they're like, you know, creating. Ch- it's just that they work hard and they're also sort of wrangling a team together and keeping them on track. He is a captain, like, in every sense of the word. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that people are seeing, and obviously BT picked it up beforehand and things like that, is over the past few games there's been a bit of complacency and it's been dropping. And I don't think it's any coincidence that them two players haven't been on, on the pitch to, to yeah. keep that together. I think against Watford, one of the things for me that we were missing was that sort of person that could go like, obviously when, when we went 1-0 down, 2-0 down, I think the players sort of went, oh, well, what do we do now? Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that Henderson and Milner would be like, you know what, so, book your ideas up, sort yourselves out, they'd be yeah. screaming at them. Yeah. And and that's the thing, I, I think, obviously Van Dijk's an excellent player and, and in the past we've had no issues with him being captain, but I think in that game we, we showed why you need a Henderson, you need a Milner. Mm. Well, we've seen, it, we've seen it through the years. I, I feel like sometimes I go a little bit hard on Gerrard's captaincy, and I don't mean it because he was a great captain for Liverpool, Undoubtedly, it doesn't need me to say that. But I think about games at like old. There was a game at Old Trafford when Mascherano got sent off, Steve, and Gerard should have been between Mascherano and the referee, and he wasn't because that was just not in his character. He's you know he's a bit more withdrawn than that. Whereas Milner Henderson are those guys. They're the guys who put themselves in harm's way. They put themselves between the action. You know the the the, the barriers when they need when they need to be and. That's that's the thing that, that that's lacking in, in teams sometimes. There's no again, no criticism of, criticism of Virgil Van Dijk, but that going back to the Watford game, one of our players gets booted. James Milner just goes and boots them back, yeah. and then the rest of the team go, "Oh, this is fine." Because even if I take a kick, I know that they're gonna get a they're gonna get a kick back. You don't need to, you don't you don't need Trent Alexander Arnold going on vendettas. He needs to be left alone to do what he does well, and players like Milner afford you to. To be able yeah, to do that. Yeah, I won the last game, didn't he? When he just takes him out on the halfway line, I'm not chasing him back. I'll just, I'll, <laughs> I'm yeah. you. Um, he was actually in the ref's here a lot this game, wasn't he, as well? After, yeah. after the Gomez incident, I think it was a few minutes later, he, he, the ref stopped the game, didn't he? Yeah. Have a word with Milner and stuff. Um, it is important to think Klopp referenced the Wofford. He said, you know, I've lost, my, I've lost both my talkers. So if he if he's mentioning it, it, it's the, it must be a, a thing. You know, it's not, it's not nothing. Like I say, it's not the be all and end all. And if you play well, you'll win. You know, Liverpool will beat Wofford nine times out of ten if you play well. He didn't, but sometimes you just you you might need that little something extra. Um, performance wise, I thought he did well. You know, I don't think he was faultless. Like I don't think anyone before. was brilliant, no. brilliant on the on the day. Ultimately, no. there were a lot of like eights and nines in that. In that and we definitely missed Robertson at times where we're on the break and he just doesn't have the legs anymore. Well, it's not that it's the... Manny's looking for him going. Rob- he was the most <laughs> right-footed yeah. left back I've ever seen. Like I don't think is there one moment in the game that he tries to cut to go in. Outside? No, 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 it's all right. Can you? No, no, no. I'll cut in, honest. <laughs> go, right, lads. What I'm going to do now is you're going to cut inside. <laughs> I am. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Are you ready for me? Yeah, yeah. No, and the times we've been on the counter and Sadio was looking, going overlap. Overlap. Here he comes. <laughs> Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, fine. It's fine. Um, I mean, look, it, should, it shouldn't be underestimated. The the technique and the, behind that clearance. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of there's just a lot of football. As I was watching, um, Harry Maguire play for Manchester United. He's a donkey. Isn't he? he is a donkey. <laughs> He's a massive donkey. Um, and he just bundles that over the line. He just he just throws himself into that and it goes in. That could you watch it? And I watched it back almost as many times as I've watched uh, Trent's corner. It's <laughs> Barcelona at this point. Like. He, he the ball comes over and he just watches it the whole way. And I mean, George, at any point during that arc, you could bottle it and and take a swing for it. But he waits to the. I mean, for a man who screwed up his volley so badly, <laughs> you know, in the in the in the first half, to to wait for that moment to strike the ball was just absolutely out of this world. I, yeah, like you said, I think you see it time and time again of the kinds of behind the goal shot. 
of a defender running and it's like, oh, you're going to click. And then they end up in the net, the ball with them and like tangled up. And it's like, oh, can't really do anything about that. And I think you see Milner running back, but I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's that that's what's going to happen. It's like, yeah, James Milner's going to clear that somehow. Yeah. But the way he does it is just like... This, I just He takes one extra stride and I think most of us just go for it and try to get anything on it. <laughs> and he takes that just one, one more pace and it allows him to get the contact on the ball that he gets on it. It's, it's, just... it's one of them things as well. It's, it's as good as a goal the other end. And, and it's he's, he's 34. He's 34 and he's able to do can something like that. Can, can we stop saying that? Can we stop saying that? I saw Chris's tweets. Like he's not dead. That, it was genuinely not that old. Yeah, but in, in the Premier League. You say that if I wake, I'm 30 and I wake up and I think if, if I'd have done that, I, I wouldn't be you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd still be on the pitch and carry yeah, me on. Like, yeah, get the stretch. I out. think as well though, like you're saying, it's, it's as good as a goal, but you saw the reaction from the crowd as well. People were up and, and genuinely celebrating that as much as a goal. And in a game where the atmosphere is getting questioned so yeah. much, it was needed. There's moments in seasons, and I think every one of those lads, or there's very few now, increasingly few members of that squad, those who, who at the end of the season, when they're, when they're lifting the trophy, when they're getting their time, their moment with it, that won't feel like they've earned it, mm. and I, you know, and James Milner has got a will have a handful of moments. This this is pure recency bias speaking, of course, but that'll be one that everyone can you know you can have this like end of a like an end of a movie where you bring up the character's name and what the and what they did next. But this is like here's the moment you show that clip of James Miller lifts the trophy and you show that clip of him clearing off the line and going there's three points That's to James what, Miller like, won for the the kind of typical in my head of like end of season montage type thing you've got like early season of Firmino doing the flicks and the tricks and then you've got obviously Origi and the but that is sort of just as important yeah. because you look at the dip and the things like that and everybody you, you know you talk about the media you talk about fans oh the people haven't got this the people haven't they've bottled it like they've done and you see the way that he's just done that so calmly and the reaction to that, that's something that kickstarts, you know, a, a comeback as such. But with the game coming on Wednesday as well, it, it's so, so important. Yeah, 100%. I didn't mention it, Jack, but um, Jürgen Klopp screaming in the face of the fourth <laughs> official when we scored. Oh, I, know, yeah. I love it. It's just absolutely unreal. Ellie apologised, didn't he? He said, like, another one. I love Jürgen's apologies of, like, I did it. I wouldn't choose to do it. I wouldn't choose to do it again. I'm sorry that I got him over the top, but he was like, Wah! it was fucking brilliant. It's, it's all the opposition fans as well, like, oh, Ancelotti got banned for saying something to the referee, and then yeah. Klopp's like, it's, it's brilliant. It just epitomises Klopp again, doesn't it? And it's just, it's just one of them things where he's, he's just class and, and um, yeah, just, just uh, on repeat. I think his apologies as well as I think he does it in the moment and then afterwards he realises that he's this role <laughs> model for kids across the pool and he just pitches like this little seven-year-old with like a cap on screaming at a Sunday league line and he's like, oh no, I can't have that. He, he, you know, he, he reminds me of like when my missus apologises and that doesn't really mean it. Yeah. And, 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 and he's still blaming the fella. Like, I am really sorry that you are such a crap ref <laughs> that I had to shout at you. Yeah. Like, like that. Like, I'm so sorry that you've been so bad that you've made me be like this. Like, <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, I absolutely. won't do it again if you're not that bad again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I will not run on the pitch again if your goalie doesn't throw one off the crossbar tonight. Like, if he does it again, I am not making any promises. Like, that's like that. 100%. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased that we managed to get a, little bit, a bit out of that. I wasn't really sure how we, we were going to analyse that game because it was just there. Uh, Can I talk about Fabinho? Actually, you know what? Let's talk about Fabinho. <laughs> Are you gonna? I I thought he was he was better. Take the mic. Yeah, I didn't like it at all. I'm still not there with him. That the, there's too much going down in the middle of our pitch, and it's too easy to get past him. And he's never been like that. You can just it, it just looks like he's. I don't know. Maybe the team, because you remember Paul as well. Is that early in the season he was playing and we were letting a lot of goals in. Mm. But the clean sheets came when Henderson pretty much went back there. You know, for a while it was. Obviously, a lot of that was down to the goalie as well, coming back in, so you need to admit that. Yeah, and also, you know, we went through a run of fixtures of very winnable yeah, games. Yeah, so it, it, there's right. a lot of factors into it, but I just thought that there was a lot going down there, what you wouldn't just you wouldn't expect. And again, it might not just be him, there's, there's a combination. There are three players in there, but it, it felt at times like he was almost, uh, not so much a passenger, but when there's that much going down there, you'd expect it more... Involvement from him. Uh, he's almost like on the periphery of the game, yeah. and for your, your centre mid, 
to be on the periphery of your game is, is a bit weird. I had a chat with my, my dad about this and I thought he was fine. What, by, by that, what I mean is he didn't noticeably stand out to me as being rubbish, which he has done a lot actually yeah. in, in recent weeks. But he didn't do the opposite. Well, the, yeah, but the point, the point my dad was making was, I'm not sure he was tested. You know, Bournemouth didn't really have the players there. You know, you've got they've got two up top who are very much on our centre halves. They don't have that the whole player in, in in the same way or whatever. But yeah, I, I, he was any normal situation. I don't think he plays that game. No. I think there's. I think I think he'd have played two or maybe even three less games or at least starts if Henderson was fit. But we kind of been left with no choice but to. If if put Henderson if, if Henderson's fit Wednesday, I don't think he plays. I, I don't think he can play after I think after again, though, you've got to look at, like you said, the people that are in front of him. I mean, we've got Ox, and was it Wijnaldum? Was that mm-hmm. the, and um, I think when you when we've had Fabinho in there with Hendo in front of him, Hendo's willing to make a run straight mm-hmm. back and cover yeah. him yeah. or wipe out a player before he gets to all, all that sort of stuff. Whereas you look at Wijnaldum also works in tandem like that. Yeah. But I just think Ox doesn't... That's I don't think of that when I think of him. I think of more, you know... Up top, kind of energy and 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 long shots. I think it's a like lot that. of it. Uh, the standards he'd set before the injury, where I think mm-hmm. he was a lot of people's consensus. You know, one of the best defensive midfielders, you know, in Europe. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if not in the league and stuff. And he, he has fell away. And like I say, he, he might just be that he's one of these lads who it takes a while to get back to fitness. Joe Gomez was the same. He, I thought it was crap at yeah. times when he fit, come back from that injury. Yeah, you know, I remember Salzburg turning him inside out and stuff, and then. He, he got into a rhythm, so it might just be that he needs games and he's going to have to have them yeah. for a while. So I just thought, you know, is a billing in sentiment for them. It, 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 you know, at times he was, he was running, he had, to, he had to free them in Anfield, and that's where I would expect a fully fit Fabinho to just go and crunch him. Yeah. He's not, yeah. I'm not, you're, not, yeah. you're not coming here, mate, and doing this on our pitch. Like, I'll just, I'll just, I'll smash you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, or even just take the ball off him. And it, it kind of never felt like he was there. And I think if I was playing Liverpool now, I would almost be going down the middle. I, I think. I think, I think two well, teams have shown now there's something there that you can get at. The the modern day CDM, the six, is is massive. It's so important. You see teams when they improve that spine, when they get that six, it, it it's pivotal in in today's game. And I think that at the minute that's why it's being so so easy to see that that he's a bit off form because obviously as as you said nobody's ever been able to get through the middle of us and and now all of a sudden they are and and I th- I think it's one of them where we need him to come back into this form on Wednesday if he's playing Wednesday it's the perfect time for him to go you know what I'm going to step it up here I uh, think as well like you said them to to kind of like bring a full circle and bring it to sources teams Bournemouth have done it Norwich did it Watford has done it West Ham uh, it's they've now become and realised that we're never going to play the pull off the park. That's never going to happen. When you've got them gaps and that bit of doubt, being niggly, getting in, leaving a foot in with the refs occasionally, like not going to give things. That is a chance for us to get in there, and it's it's worked and it's happened because we didn't have, like we said, we didn't have them captains on the pitch or the talkers to. To I be like, listen, if you're going to do Cal it, Wilson's we're going to do it. just gone and done his, his best Troy Deeney there, hasn't he, you know what I mean, in, in that game, because but why not? And teams is, are now seeing it and thinking what, that, is, that, yeah. that works. Well, I've been saying... That Diego say, Costa could Diego Costa the death yeah. out of the game. Diego Costa will not be scared by an Anfield atmosphere. He will see that as, like, the greatest villain show ever. Yeah, oh, you just want to boo me a full... But I've been saying this about these runner run teams that we've had. Then on paper, you're like, oh, relegation fodder, brilliant, exactly what you want. But this is the last point of the season where these lads are going to have any fight left in them. Yeah. And they play us, and, you know, obviously we, 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 we've dipped as a result of it because <clears throat> they've got nothing to lose and we've got everything to lose. We're not, not necessarily the league title, but I've been saying this, and I want to talk, I'll talk about this in the build up show for, for Atletico, but I've been saying this for a week or so now. That Atletico game is so big. It is it, that is the one that no one of our team wants to not be involved in mm. that game, and you don't want to be the lad who goes in. It. Are you gonna just leave it, leave a little bit in the tank mm. because you want to make sure that you you know you're not getting injured or you're not doing whatever? Mm. And that's that. I think that I think I think you're right. That's what they've looked at. You play Bournemouth, you play Norwich, you play West Ham, you play Watford. If you play them, in the, unless it's down to like a final game of the season, last roll of the dice. Most of those teams, it's generally settled in the with like a, with like what four or five mm-hmm. games to go or whatever. 
they're a different kettle of fish. They, they, they've, they've run out of energy. The legs have gone because it's been an arduous season. Even if they want to put that level of fight in, yeah. they actually physically they can't do it as well. They are, yeah. And they might just be done and they might be on the beach. They might be playing for moves and all that kind of stuff or just looking to not be injured or playing to not, don't want to get injured for the Euros or et cetera, et cetera. So I mean, this has been a trickier spell. Oh, for grabs yeah. as well for them, which is what we've been. A far trickier spell than I think people probably give it credit for. Um, let's talk about, I want to talk about City United. Anyone, everyone watched the game? Yeah. Watched some of it. Um, I have never enjoyed a Manchester United victory quite like <laughs> I enjoyed that particular Manchester United victory. Couldn't bring myself for that, I'll be honest. I couldn't. Really? I, I, not that, not a car. Oh, no, I, I get it. It's I just, like it's great, it's, but still like yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting fucking Takes glory, glory. I've got my face. Trendy, damn. That, you know, that Hazen Hootel gift where he celebrates, then he's like, I've got to go every time. Or I've got two shows. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe she's like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed that because it was it was win win because ultimately if Man United get smashed it's expected and it's quite Man funny. United so it's just funny um, and if the and if Man United win then it puts Liverpool a step closer to the title and that's what it, that, and ultimately that's what it did we've gone from needing nine points to needing six but the, the idea that we now don't if we can win our next two games that we don't need. I mean, Sorry, we don't need to go to the Etihad. We never needed to go to the Etihad to win because we could have just won. We got Villa the game after and you just, you just beat Villa <laughs> on field and it's done. But the fact that it's not going, it, can, it, you, it you doesn't can have to be under the lights. And you can be the oh, winners. Mate, we could That's... win the league. We, could, we, might, we, we might not kick a ball yeah. Yeah. The league before, before we kick a ball again. I think what it did show, it showed that we are miles better than City this yeah. season. Mm-hmm. I, and, and City are good and they are still very, very good. But City can still finish the the season on eighty seven points yeah. if they win the fight in the remaining games. Like eighty seven points should we win in the league? But they look like they've, every season. they've got no legs. The leg like, they are knackered. They look absolutely shattered, and the goalie threw two in. I think, and, that, and that, that can, you know we've we've lived that life, haven't we? We've, <laughs> we've been there before. Like they were shockers from a from a fellow you just would not expect it from. I think Edison's brilliant. Yeah, like I think I've I've always. I've never thought it was that much different. I thought Alison was better, but I've always thought it was mm. it was nip and tuck. But he's just had one of those days where, you know, it's a, a Jersey do deck Diego Forland day where yeah. f- for whatever reason you've just had an absolute stink show. And that's what the difference because United aren't great, are they? They got two goals off off their goalie throwing them in. But to be fair, at the Bruno Fernandez, he's a, he's, Martial, yeah, every think, goal is genius. Yeah. I think with, bo- with both sides, that's been a really unique Manchester derby because neither are at their peak. And neither are at their absolute worst. You've mm. got City sort of in a weird rebuild type season because it's the halfway. I think Pep was saying through, and the and I think Bernardo Silva said it like it is weird because you're so far from fourth that it's you're not Champions League is almost guaranteed. You're never going to be winners, so it's like almost it's the, how to keep yourself going. Yeah, and I think as when you've well, got a big game coming up and you've got Champions League games. Yeah, right? and then I think with United, they've been in such a kind of low type spell, and now they're they're picking momentum up. You've they're got a bit Bruno like, Fernandes. Chelsea are a bit like this as well. They're a bit like what we were in the early days of Klopp, where big games are great because you've got yeah. lots of big game players still in your mm-hmm. squad. Yeah, you will bang up for it. You still generate. You can generate the atmosphere. Your fans are up for it. these games. Matter. And you can be a bit of the underdog as well. Like Man United just played on the counter. That's... You know, they're a home against Man. This is Manchester United who sat back and soaked the pressure. We're looking to it, James, Five on, at the you know, smacking it, but smacking that, it into the they're, corner. They're the things. games that can change that that team season. That can give them that final push for the end of the season. And you saw it with with Ollie and the, the the celebrations he had. And I think Gary Neville said afterwards of like you compare that to his post match a month ago. It's a completely different match. Would you yeah. prefer going to Everton having as champions because City have lost two? Or going to Everton to having to win. I've said this for ages, and I'll, I'll, plenty of people can disagree with me, and it's absolutely fine. I think Everton are going to be started. Uh, Everton from next season onwards are going to start to be on their way back to being a good side again. Mm-hmm. And I think this is our last opportunity to redefine what the most Everton thing is. And I think we did it by putting a second string team out in the league, and we thought that was it. We thought they were doing it last season. Then we thought this the, at Anfield. Then we then the FA Cup went and completely ripped up the rule book and started the game and did it with crayons because we were all children playing the game. And the, to to win the title after thirty years at Goodison Park, I I genuinely and I know there's the whole. We'd rather have fifty-four thousand, you know, people in there watching it and blah blah blah. I, I, I look, I'm, not, I'm probably not even going to be able to get a ticket for that game, but 
Just get it won. Just the the collective. Mate, I'm worried that the games are going to get cancelled. Get it won now. Get, get, get these games, <laughs> get, get the title won because I'm not having no fella in a court saying, oh, the season will end. No, no, we've won it. It's ours, I don't care. The best thing about it would be after last season where they sang that song about losing the league at Goodison Park and then this year we go and win it there. Would be that. That's it for me. That sells it for me. It's the same thing as yesterday. It meant, it meant more for me a uh, City losing because I want Raheem Sterling to be stood there giving us a guard of honour. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I, I want Joe Gomez to walk down, <laughs> give him eye contact, pick him up. give him the big ones. <laughs> do as, the shit, do it, do it, do it, do it. I just think that would be class. I uh, think as well at Goodison, the kind of as great as, you know, 50 odd thousand cheers at Anfield would be, to have the Liverpool fans cheers, which will be more than it, to have the rest just collective, kind of, oh, just, just, <laughs> just, uh, just yeah. Smart. I, I, and look, there's a possibility as well if they want to play games behind closed doors, that's as close as you're going to get with Goodison just be empty. You know, none of them will turn up. Just talking them all like, say, like they're turning the back, so doing all, doing we- really fucking weird oh, things. Oh, we've like. put banners up of really like controversial things so we can't be on telly. Yeah, like, like Harold Shipman banners up and stuff like that. Oh, you fucking weird. I, 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 I was even more buzzing because I found out yesterday I'm going to Thailand and I found out that it's during the City game that I'm flying to Thailand. So if we were to win it when I'm on a fucking plane, <laughs> I'd have been fuming. So the fact that, the fact that you're you'll be getting on that plane, part of worry about it. You'll be stuck in your house, don't worry about it. With all of us, it's a very bad place to be trapped to celebrate <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it happens. Like, but uh, no, it's um, I, 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 yeah, for me, I'd, I'd love to see us just win it. That bit to be fair, that you're banking on Arsenal or Burnley getting something off City. Um, that's the mad one. I mean, it's two home games, isn't it, for City back to back now? And uh, I mean, there's definitely something to the Arteta, yeah. you know, Arteta. The, the, you know, knowing all the ways and all that, and has he got them good enough to be able to do something? But they've got goals in them. They've got goals in them. He needs City it are though. Up he City needs are. it. Like Arta, I, I don't know if you guys the tenth or what they were. I don't know. But like <laughs> Arsenal being that is not. Like they talk about big clubs and Man United and things like that. Also, being that low is awful. They they can't get Europe any other way. Like, so they've got to do well in the league. And uh, City uh, again, I keep saying the like, centre half is is a mess. It's an absolute mess. Um, Ottomendi, I mean, for the stick lover and get, and I know Ottomendi's got the medals in the bag, and he's, he's been, mm. but he's, he's they're cut from the same cloth. They are, they're they're very, like you look at it, and Lovren's like little honest shit, not too bad, like running up in the World Cup or that. Yeah, no, you looked on paper, and then you've never both, seen them play. You yeah. think, oh yeah. They're both all right, yeah. but they, they, they are, they are cut from the same cloth. He's yeah. probably got like Leo Messi in a WhatsApp group, hasn't he? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like, like all these boss players, but. There was an there was an article on it. I think it was the Athletic who said he literally like Demi Kalis from a few years ago. Yeah. Where at that sort of club you can't have that. That he'll be got rid of in the summer and, re- and replaced. I'm gonna say Pep's gonna spend a fortune in the summer if he's allowed to. Oh like, my God, yeah, but, but, he's gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be insane in the transfer market. So yeah, that's a, I think it's I think we've wrapped that up there. I, it, 25 points clear. I, I, I was looking at. I do it every now and again to like to make me laugh. I get the lead table up, and on my phone, it doesn't have all. It doesn't fit all 20 on the app I use. So you've got. If you want to see the top team, you've got to scroll all the bottom team. So I scroll such that Liverpool are on it, and I look at the league table. I'm like, if that was that's like, just like, <laughs> like a normal league table. City, I've got a good lead. You know, at the top. And there's some decent teams around there, but it's still competitive. And one little twist of tear might open things up, and then it just slides. Mm-hmm. There's 25 points. I'm surprised they're not like because the gap's getting that, that that there's no sort of petition for like. What if we do like just ignore them? They get their own little trophy. What if we do like a runners-up trophy? Because no, it's no, that honestly, like maybe, I guarantee there'll be some parody city account that suggests that at some point, like you because Liverpool because of VAR. Like we finished it really, we won the real trophy because of yeah, yeah, the absolute losers. The best thing is twenty five points clear. Roy Hodgson got twenty five points at Liverpool. That in this whole time at Liverpool, well, he accumulated twenty five. I points. think it was Andrew Beasley put the tweet out saying like Liverpool don't turn up until Old Trafford. We don't play. We don't kick a ball. We decide not to play a game until Old Trafford, and we draw, and then we we carry on from there, and we're still top of the league. That's basically. Been good, haven't we? Bloody good. <laughs> Bloody good. Um, right, the Around the League show is coming up on the RedmenTV.com where they're going to be talking a bit about the Manchester Derby, I'm sure, and a lot about what's going to happen when coronavirus basically shuts everything down, which is bad. Don't, don't, Mate, I'm, don't, I'm all don't. over. Um, let's hope it all gets done. The stick I've had in this place today. Yeah, no, he's going he's gonna to antibacterial hand gel after this. 
you you the reason I sold out of yours, mate. A hundred percent. I am hand gel in my hands in a really minute. Do what you guys do. Why don't you just cover yourself in PVA glue? Do you reckon that'll work? That sticks, virus. Sticks. Peel it off and, and put a new layer. It's like put, covering yourself in a whole you know new layer, protective just, layer. Just wash your hands and. Stop touching your face all the time. Like I've, I've touched my face three times today, and every time I've done it, I thought, "Oh no, I've just touched my face there." PSA, look straight down the line. This is you've got a hard cut, a hard cut moment to me, just lying in a hospital bed. This is like, honestly, <laughs> mate. I've, I've touched my face three times today, and I'm, and I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm desperate to go for this angel. You need to wrap up. Let's, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching and for listening to that. And make sure you do head over to The Athletic and sign up. All the information will be in the uh, description underneath, including the link and the code and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, guys, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Elbow wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, The Athletic Build-Up will, will be on the YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out and we'll see you there. ta <laughs>